What is the connection of that with this sleep paralysis? The connection is that in many cases, when we are in an astral projection and we are conscious, okay, so that is an important thing, or at least conscious enough to know something is not quite well, something is not nice to you, and you concentrate on coming back or spontaneously you come back, you may come back with some of the energies that you have encountered in that experience that you are returning from. Now, in the case of my experience, it had five phases and I'm going to go quickly through them, but I think describing how it happened helps you to understand some of the things that we have experienced. Everything started when I was in an environment, maybe projected in a way, I don't remember what happened until that moment. That is the moment when I start having recollection. All of a sudden, I saw like uh, there, as if there were a number of people, perhaps six, seven, five, around that. And they were getting close and getting around in a way that would make me scared scared to a point that anyone would just get out of there. But I noticed that their energies would come to me in a way that was trying to paralyze me. You know when you feel threatened, scared, uncomfortable, and something kind of stops you? Have you ever had that? Like in a dream that perhaps was not only a dream? Or in a projection, fully conscious or half conscious, sometimes this is a tactics, it's a strategy that some of these consciousnesses who want to scare us out of a place or who want to just confuse us or want to get energy of fear from us or something like this, there can be many possibilities. In this case, they were trying to stop my work, scare me off, like uh, revenging or punishing me for what I was working to create that specific course. That doesn't scare me at all. On the contrary, I'm used to it. And this shows how important the work is, how many people will benefit. Because those consciousness that I was seeing there, around me, trying to stop me, mm, no, they were not the type of consciousness that would be happy with people, you and I, having good energy self-defense, good lucidity of what goes on. So I started feeling paralyzed. And what I did, and I'm sharing with you what I did, because that is the technique that I applied. But at the end of our little talk here, I'm going to give you some tips on what you can do to prevent it or to deal with it, okay? But I'll tell you what I did. I was very proud of how I handled it because I was purely rational the whole time. That is key. If you get emotional, you lose control. So I re recognized what was happening, what they were doing, and I say, no, that's not acceptable. No, no, no. I never thought negative of anyone, any of them. I was never violent, but I put my limits. No, 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 this, no, this. I can be wherever I want. You cannot do this. So then I create like a burst of energy, like going out. And they kind of had to get a little bit further. And I did a velo technique. If you do not know what's the velo technique, I'll put some links here for you if you are with us for the first time. But it's a technique for self defense, balancing the chakras that we use inside the body, outside the body. It's a very good technique. And I apply it a lot, a lot for many different things when I am outside the body. But this technique that I did then, when I worked with velo, I went to a slightly different environment. But then those consciousness managed to get closer again. And then they came with a totally different visual. I was in Mexico City. And you know the type of um, image they use, like with their folklore, 
in their culture, when it's period when they are celebrating or paying homage to those that passed away. And they have all of those little dolls that are like very beautiful looking, very colorful cadavers or something like this, corpse. I love the colors of all of that. And amazing enough, it's a happy moment, even though it's ambiguous. It has both sides and one has to know how to handle that. Now, because I was there, I started seeing some image that resembled that, as if those consciousness tried to change their appearance and got close to me again, but this time looking a little bit like zombies. And I wonder how many people have dreams of zombies? How many people feel scared of that? Because it's such a crazy moment where we see zombies in so many movies, in so many TV series. And I wonder what is the point of all of that? Zombies, it can be interesting for you to make a movie, but you, you have like many years watching that over and over and over. So it becomes a little bit like part of the egregore of the atmosphere of the place, of the information that is there around. And I saw those zombie-like consciousness getting closer and closer. So I thought I have to work harder with energy. Actually, this phase now was even when I thought I'm going to work harder, was easier than the first one. The first one I had to push, but hey, how hard is that? It's not hard at all, it's just our mind. Okay, I, I want to do it. And then now, when I started working again and creating some waves of energy and doing velo, then I got very close to the body. So close that I thought, I'm going to do another velo and I'm going to re-enter the body and I will work with energy, like emitting energy creating waves that will cleanse the way for all of these. Anyways, I want you to understand that in terms of what I was trying to accomplish, which was helping cleanse some of the spiritual, non-physical realms around that community or that place. And the course that we were organizing was to emphasize that and to bring more energetic cleanness and strength to specific areas of the community and specific people, of course, you immediately think that the more we were, we were doing that, the better it were for the result. But then when I came and I re-entered the body, there comes the thing. What I noticed and please, you tell me later on if you ever had this experience. What I noticed is that I re-entered the body and I couldn't wake up. Sleep paralysis? Yes, but not any sleep paralysis. As I told you, there are different types of sleep paralysis. What I had was the type of sleep paralysis in which we have lots of this energy from someone else, and in this case, from those consciousness that I had encountered, lots of those energies attach it to our energy body. So we kind of return to the body, cannot wake up, and end up leaving the body again and encountering the same guys. Have you ever had that? I had that several times. When we are conscious projector, we have this sometimes, but that's easy situation to handle. It's no reason at all to be afraid. We need to understand what's going on. It would be the same of telling people, look, sometimes if you eat too much, you may throw up and then the person will be afraid of eating. No, it's if you eat too much and if you throw up, you know what to do. That's it. Same thing here. It's just a situation that is common when we talk about the multidimensional reality, physical reality, non-physical reality, energies that are involving both our chakras. It's all of that. So this is natural. 
I'm being very careful so I don't give you a wrong impression or imprint a wrong image in your mind. I think that is very important if we are teaching, that we teach correctly. Not teaching you that everything is just flowers and sparkles in the air. No, there are things that are not nice, but not, it's not dangerous either. It's natural situation with a balance of both and what we need is to know how to handle both. So I'm being very careful here with my account. But look, that sleep paralysis was due to an energy attack that I had in that first phase of the projection, which I got rid of and it came back and it came back twice. And when I finally re-entered the body, I still had the energy of those non-physical presences. Therefore, there was a connection with them in a way. So even though I re-entered the body, I kept feeling their presences. That is something important for us to understand because sometimes when we have an out of body experience, we come back and we may not totally get rid of unbalanced energies. So during the day, that the recollection and the feeling of that experience keeps returning and we kind of relieve that sensation. That is a sign that the energy of that experience is still there. If it's not pleasant, you've got to cleanse it and you can do it by yourself. You don't need Nancy, you do not need IS, you do not need anybody. You have to learn to do it by yourself. We do teach techniques so that people can do it, but that's why we want to give you the power to be independent. And that is very important that you keep in mind. Now, when you have a wonderful, beautiful, out of body experience, let's say you were flying around and just getting very good, nice cosmic energy, extra physical energy, then yes, you will also bring some of this energy. And what will happen? Every time you remember of it, during the day, you may feel like energy showers, like a lovely sensation, a lovely tingling that makes you feel very good. And some of the experience that we have, the good sensation may last for days, as in some cases, the not good one also may last for days if the person who experienced it do not know how to cleanse it. In this case, after I returned to the body, and I observed I still had those consciousness. I fought a bit to remain inside the body. So I did my velo and I worked and I managed to reduce a lot the connection with them, but they were still very close. I could even feel as if I were seeing them because I left the body again and I tried not to, but I left the body again, which was a nice experience because I learned I saw what type of environment I was in. I could see how those consciousness were trying to hook me and they were trying to hook me, like create a rapport, an energy connection. They cannot hold me there. Huh? I would wake up, I would return, but the experience is not nice. And I would, wouldn't or couldn't say that I had freedom there if I would return and I wake up and get out of there because of fear but there is no damage that can be done to my physical body, not as far as we know. You will wake up, but with that bad experience. And learning how to govern ourselves, how to have self-determination, self-balance outside the body teaches us how to have it inside the body too. So while I was there in this last phase, I could see those consciousness and even touch the non-physical body of one of them. Very strange sensation, I can tell you. But after this, I returned to the body again. And this time, the connection was looser. What did I do? I did two things. One, VELO. Because VELO works very well for re-engaging us to the body. When the process of engaging, reconnecting, is not developing 
as fast as we would like or as expected. But VELO also helps when we are about to leave the body and we want to, and we want to have control to detach from the body, we want to witness this non-physical reality that exists. So the VELO will also help to disconnect when that is the case. So it's almost as if it's something that reorganizes the connection to the body, from the astral body to the physical body, I mean, and then, of course, it helps a lot. In that moment, I did a strong velo so that I would reconnect. And I did a technique that was trying to control something in my physical body so that I would be more in rapport with the physical sensation than with the non-physical one. Because you can imagine those presences there, I was completely sensing them. They were very clear to me. So my point was, I want to sense the physical body. And I knew, and my plan was, after I return to the body, I'm going to continue emitting energies, emitting, emitting to all of those consciousness that I could find outside the body because I had encountered them. So I was very rational and conscious the whole time. And what I tried to do was to breathe deeply or have a deeper breath. So I made an effort. It was an effort, right? Because I was in a sleep paralysis. I was sensing more the non-physical reality than the physical one. The non-physical body than the physical body. So, yes, I breathed deeply and tried to use my vocal cords, like to make some noise with the breathing so that I would also hear. So I was using different senses of my physical body. Until then, I came back. And after I came back fully and started feeling my physical body, clearly I continued with the breathing and moving to make sure I was not going to detach again. <laughs> not at that time. And then I sit up and I work with energy. So you see how the sleep paralysis happened in connection with that energy attack. And I call attack because, please let's understand this, because it was intentionally made, intentionally created. That is not common. Most of the times when we experience some sort of not pleasant energy, it's not an attack. It's just sensing something that is around, that was not balanced. It's not intended to do anything to us. In this case, it was an attack because it was intended to scare me. It was intended to make me have a hard experience. And those consciousness were smart in terms of energy. They knew how to use energy. Okay, so that's why I was, in a way, challenging them with the work I was doing. Because if I teach people who defend, to defend themselves and to be balanced with their energy, for them, they have less of the power that they used to have.